computer. Here we go. Hello, everyone. Happy Wednesday. I hope everybody is doing well. Uh, we have such an exciting topic today. You know, we've done a lot of different things, but this one just seems to be a really appropriate one for us because a lot of us now have grandchildren. And there's just some things. So what we're doing today, we're going to talk about age-appropriate chores for kids getting getting our children, our grandchildren, help around the house. See, Deb, how are you today? I'm good, Laura. I'm good. And you know what? I think you and I, like, this is a good topic because we're doers. Like, we're like, oh, we'll just do it. We'll just do it. And I think it, since we now both have grandchildren, we know that, you know, they, we should be the example and having them, you know, step up and do stuff. You know, I know we all did it with our kids. I know we ha had our kids, but this is kind of a good reminder. So yeah, I love this topic. It was a good pick, Laura, big, good pick. See, you know, it's a good topic for us now, Debbie. Kids are different today mm -hmm. from when we had our kids. They had different things, right. you know, um, if you took away TV now, I don't think kids would care as much as they would take your electronics away or, you know, reward them with electronics kind of stuff. So really it's it's different, but yet it's the same. But we got to kind of adapt it to what they're doing now. Right. Does that make sense, Deb? Total sense. Total sense. So go ahead. You can go on and start about some of the different chores right. for the different age groups. No, this, this sounds fun. Okay, so here's the thing, guys. We got to look. We're going to start with the younger to the older. And we're just going to go through some ideas. And, you know, sometimes we don't think about this. But, you know, kids like to be included. You know, I, and I, I think of my right. grandson loves to cook. He loves to help. He loves to set the table. He loves to be part of the family activity. So it's a great thing to have people all engaged in it. So it says well, things for like four-year-olds to six-year-olds or four-year-olds, let's just say four-year-olds. Um, You can put them, help them put, Tell them to put their toys away. I think that's something that we should always make sure that they're always cleaning up after what they did because then they know to leave the place as clean as it was when it started. Um, help helping sort socks from the laundry. You know, that's another good one. That sounds so silly, but you know what? It's kind of like you're doing it together, time to talk, whatever. Putting plate placing the napkins on the dinner table and even setting the dinner table. You know, um, People don't think about it, but four-year-olds, they love that, you know? So um, what do you think, Laura? I think it's great. And I think that uh, a, a rewarding them for that, you know, uh, like it's, we were reading about doing charts and stuff, but they love to to be rewarded. You know, four-year-olds, they that age, they want to help, you know what I mean? Right. And, you know, just sorting stuff out like that is great. I just want to intercede here, Deb, and just say, you know what I wanted to do years ago? And I'm so sorry I never did. When YouTube came out, I had this idea of taking room by room and making a, a, a video on how to clean that particular room so that the kids could look back at it as a reference to see what I expect to have done in the room and how to do it. I never did it, but that would have been great. I wonder if somebody did something like that. No in YouTube, you never know, right? <laughs> yeah, I think that would be a great idea. Totally. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Um, okay, moving on to chores for five year olds, Laura. How about you do that one? Okay. Uh, five year olds. You have to kind of look at their maturity because some five year olds are a younger five and some are old. It actually it depends on the month of their birthday too, where they're at in their birthday. But um their process is really good and they want to, they want to help too. And, you know, age for appropriate chores for them is like even making their bed, you know, um, folding the blankets and putting the pillows on there. What I've done with my granddaughter is, uh, with Lyric, is I say, you make your bed pretty. So make your bed pretty in the morning. And I've always said this, and I don't know if you do this, Debbie, is, I feel that a bed should be made every day. It should be made first thing in the morning because then when you go to bed at night, it's like it's like you're rewarding yourself to this beautiful bed. Mm -hmm. So if you start teaching them that at five year, four or five years old, I always tell Lyric, ah, did you make your bed beautiful today? 
And sometimes she'll say yes, and sometimes she says no. But it is, it's true. So making a bed is great for five-year-olds. Let me see what other things are great. Putting clothes into drawers. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, putting their socks, putting their shirts, whatever, however you have it sorted. And you could put labels on the on the dressers too if you want to. That age you're really not reading, but they could recognize stuff. You could you could uh, take a piece of uh, sticker or whatever and draw a picture of what goes in that drawer. You know, or even take a from a catalog or something or a magazine and tape it on there. Yeah, it's a great idea. So yeah. Yeah, how about a six-year-old? Well, okay, so six-year-olds, here's a cool thing. At the, around that time, you can there's downloadable chore charts and apps for parents, like if you want to do like a chore chart, because that's always a good thing. Let them see, like get them to set kind of a goal of knowing like if I get these chores done that I get to do X amount of things, you know? And so um, other things at six-year-olds, I'm telling you, raking leaves, this is a perfect time of year for raking leaves helping them sort the mail at that point they're reading they can kind of be like this you know if you have more than a, one or two people in your household getting mail setting the dinner table for sure with non-breakable items <laughs> although at six years old a lot of the kids can they're fine with that you know again Lori hit, nailed it it's maturity level you know some six-year-olds are are more mature you know also considering having them water the plants I'll tell you what my grandson at even the littlest age, loved watering and planting plants when it's that planting time in the spring when you're planting. But he loves to water and, and all that and let them start with their little green thumb and understanding, watching things grow. I mean, that's that's so much fun, just making sure they don't drown the plant. But I mean, seriously, right. it's, it's awesome. true. True. Yeah, it's a good lesson. And I have some indoor plants in Fake Glory. All my poinsettias are so green right now. So I'm hoping they, it's oh, wonderful. It's awesome. they were red in the spring, which was so weird. Yeah. You guys. I, I hate poinsettia stuff, but he, we watched that, you know, we water and everything. So with that being said, you got anything else on the six-year-olds? Try to think about when Lyric was six, what, what I had her do, because she was over at her house a lot. Um, you know what? I think you pretty nailed all the different things. Setting the dinner table and with non-breakable items. I have to have non-breakable items because I drop things all the time with my hands. So, you know, that's good. So seven-year-olds, you know, they're already in grade school already and they're gaining responsibility and independence. And don't let them, I mean, don't be afraid to let them do things on their own because they're learning that right now. And mm -hmm. the thing is, don't be hard on it either. If they make a mistake, show them how to do it, something better and then have them do it, you know? And they could sort, they could sort out mail too, setting the table. And they can even make a simple breakfast, like putting toast in the toaster. Mm -hmm. um, I know that. Well, Lynn was just turned eight, but when she was seven, she was actually making pancakes. Yeah. So with supervision by the stove or whatever. Waffles, yeah. you could easily make waffles because you have the waffle maker and you're not gonna get start a fire with that. Um, they could also empty the dishwasher. Gosh, mm -hmm. that is a great thing. Mm -hmm. That takes so much time. And by that time, they already know where things go, where all the forks go, the cups go, the plates go. And um, they could even collect tra trash and yeah. waste paper baskets, you know, and get that all taken care of. Picking up trash around the house, you know. I mean, there's all things that they could do. And again, we're going to, you know, do some kind of reward system for them. Uh, right next to that is, oh my God, not uh, eight year olds. Did we get to eight year olds yet? No, we didn't. So eight-year-olds, gosh, I'm telling you, they can help prepare after-school snacks. Like a lot of times yes. okay, they can go and you could say, okay, you can go into the cabinet, the pantry, whatever. And, it, you know, like healthy conscious, you know, set the ground rule, whatever. Um, pop some popcorn. I mean, that's enough, that's yeah. easy if they can reach the microwave or whatever. Um, they can uh, help you get the condiments and the ketchups and all that kind of stuff in and out. You know, they can also like for the meals or whatever, they can also help you unload the groceries when you go to the grocery store. I know my grandson absolutely loves when he goes and he likes to take the stuff out of the cart and put it on the belt. Okay. Like on the thing. And if we go to self-checkout, he likes to be the self-checkout person, you know, like he's doing it. He think you know, it's cool. So those are things like 
it doesn't mean it's chores around the house. It could be like, okay, we're going to do this. Help me out. Let's go check this out. Let's go get this done. And let's go get this errand done. You're at the post office, let them put the mail and whatever. These are silly things, but they feel part of everything. You know, it makes them being like, kind of like part of like, we're all part of a team in a household, whether it's a grandchild that visits occasionally, a grandchild that lives with you, a child, your own children, whatever, your adult children, whatever, you know, your husband, yeah. <laughs> husbands and boyfriends, oh boy, you know, but I mean, it's a matter of, it's cool. So, um, but this is a good one, Laura, why don't you look over like the, the right way to set up a reward system? This is where the kids are getting older and you know, we can reward them because they're going to understand that goal that they've set, you know, to do something. So go ahead, Laura. Okay. When I set up a system, a reward system for kids, there's many different things you could do. First of all, what I would do is I would have a family meeting. All right. I, this is what I would do personally. And if you guys don't have this in your house, I'm going to suggest that you do. That you have a room that doesn't have a TV in it. All right. And there's no TV, but it's the talking room. Mm -hmm. I loved it. I had it for years and my kids still remember how great it was. We had no distractions, but sit down and talk about what chores did you expect them to do and get, let them make some suggestions, what they think about it, make them part of it. And then set up some kind of a system for reward system. You can make a chart with stickers on it. You can make a chart or you could do money, you mm -hmm. could do coins, uh, and the stickers could be for uh, having more time on your, your computer or, your, you know, what you like to watch on your, your electronics. Mm -hmm. um, it could be for going to bed later, uh, watching a movie longer at night or um, it could be a lot of different things, but that's something that you and your kids and your grandkids need to talk about because right. that's the only way they're going to know because making them a part of it builds self-esteem, I think, with them. Don't you think that? I think so. And I think that like, it's a matter of like, okay, this will carry on through little lessons learned, you know, that like when you work hard and you get paid and you pay your bills, you have money left over, you can go out, you know, like it's, 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 even though you guys, that's at a higher level, that's an adult level. It's the little level, you know, yeah. like we start to get them to kind of like understand that, you know, that you can't, you can't have do the fun stuff unless you get the other stuff done or whatever, you know, so. You know, teach the kids put music on, you know, Sing that clean up, clean up song for your little ones. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Barney. Song. Barney. Remember Barney? Barney had that one. Yeah. Up, you know, yeah. yeah. Oh, God, yes. And there's just so much you do. But I really think, you know, I have not done this with my grandkids, but I think I'm going to do this the next time they're over. I'm going to talk to them when, when we first get to my house, and I'm going to say, okay, we're going to have a lot of fun, but these are things that I want you to make sure you do. You know, mm -hmm. just so they know that there's some rules over there at grandma's house. Right. And, you know, rule, and the rules at the family's house. And right. you know what? They don't want you to bully them with uh, taking away things from them. Right. Like say, oh, if you're not going to do that, then I'm going to take this away from you. Right. They say that's bullying and that's not good to do. Because you know what, guys? Here's one thing, Lori. And I've been noticing this a lot because now I'm back in the eight nine year old ten year old zone okay because I'm seeing it with through my grandson and I kind of feel kids that bully out there like they didn't have that solid good like they they were having what you just mentioned okay so the positive reinforcement and the good work ethic you can, you can kind of tell when you look at other families you know what I mean so create this environment. It's not that difficult. It's just a couple simple steps that Lori and I are talking about that are just, and again, we're no experts. We're learning too. We're things that she's saying and things I'm saying, we're both taking it from each other. I, I'm reading on here about the backpack thing at night, making your child be accountable for the permission slips and the supplies needed and the extra snack or whatever needs to be put in there. That's part of them. That's part of them developing um, 
the word I want to use. Just being, and I don't want to say independent, just responsibility, right? I'm having a hard time hearing you. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me get closer. Yeah. Um, sorry. Uh, it, when you were growing up, Deb, did you have like chores you had to do and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, we're, and we're getting into this next one, Laura. Um, I don't know you or I go, go for it. It's the 10 to 13 one. I think, yeah. yeah, this is kind of where I feel like I used to do, like, I used to clean the bathroom. I used to help right. out in the kitchen mm -hmm. do things for my mom because my mom was working. So like when I had time, I didn't want her to have to come home and do a lot of that stuff. And I thought ahead, but I also think, you know, it all came from the way we were raised. You know, and, and we're not knocking today's dates and today's times because today's times are different, yeah. but we had a television. That was it. You guys, we had nothing else but a television. So, you know, we were rewarded with, I remember on Saturdays, we used to get to watch American Bandstand and when yeah. we American Bandstand, we had a banquet chicken, our banquet meal that we would watch during that. And we were excited because it had a, it had a um, chicken in it at a dessert and it was yeah. like you know but I mean so these are the things that like okay when you look at this right now it's like kids just want everything instantly they want it tomorrow or not tomorrow they want it yesterday they want it now 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 and it you know you can change that you can set the ground rules but you got to get it done early enough you know right. so you know and, and make it not and don't make it about being like something terrible to do Oh, you know, everybody should be more positive when it comes to stuff like this, you know, um, and you shouldn't be screaming at your kids either about doing stuff. I know some parents are kind of overwhelmed with everything and they come home and they expect everything to be clean and everything and they start screaming at the kids. It's not a positive thing. No. To do. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It's not at all. And, no. Uh, I remember just... I remember as a kid going, oh, we got to hurry up. The cleaning Nazis coming over, you know, like we were all worried because we didn't do our chores. Right. So, so, yeah. And then, you know, you get into your tweens, you know, 10 to 13 year olds, you know, they can fold clean laundry. They can even do laundry at that age. I know, uh, give a dog a bath. That is, if it's not a huge dog and they can handle it. Otherwise, you have the dog running through the house. They can help with yard work, um, keep the counter clean, the car clean, and, um, and you know, just have them do all kinds of stuff. And also being really kind to their younger siblings. That's really important, you know? So, you know, you just mentioned something. I think that um, leading by example is a huge thing. And obviously the way that a household runs and the way that we treat our children and grandchildren is going to help them treat mm -hmm. their schools, right? Right, right, right. You know. You know, and still in the, in the grandkids or the kids that you are the older elder one and that, you know, you need to teach your, you know, whatever, if it's a little, little younger yeah. brother and show them look what you're doing show them how to do it and you know what that puts them in a little leadership role and it it's it's good you know it's a good thing right 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 um, yeah, I, go ahead. no no go ahead. go ahead i was gonna say you know there's really nothing wrong with them washing their own clothes no. because that's another great thing i don't know if you guys have teenager grandkids or whatever or you have teenagers what happens with them is they have to change constantly they're going to three or four outfits a day you know and they need if they're doing their own wash you watch and see how they're not going to be doing that or they're going to be hanging up stuff that they just took took that they just took off you know because they're responsible for it yeah. you know because there's nothing worse than having so much more laundry than needed to be because they wore it for an hour or something agreed you know? Here's one, Laura. The parents share the unwritten rules of allowances. Now, I don't think there's any cookie cutter good way of doing this. I think you have to come up with a game plan. But what I'm sort of reading in here, okay, is that um, instead of having, like, if they have specific chores and things they have to do, now this is age 13 and up, 
And you know, sometimes these kids need, you know, they want to go out for ice cream and they and, and things like that. And things have gotten very expensive. So you kind of got to go with what works best for you. But I think that you also have to let them learn how to how to actually be able to like work with money because it's hard, but you know, for kids to learn that. And so maybe they should have an allowance maybe once a week, as long as they've completed all their things, instead of saying, Oh, I'm going to pay you this amount of money to go rake the leaves. You know, maybe every week rotates because you don't need to rake the leaves every week or you don't need to, some kids can mow the lawn too at this age. You know what I mean? Oh, so, definitely mow the lawn. Yeah. So I think that the allowance stuff could be, is, is gotta be an individualized situation. There's no right or wrong. And I think you gotta go with what works best for you and how you feel. But I also think that also in here, which is kind of cool is, you know, cleaning the bathrooms, but also we were talking about the younger siblings, the older children can help out with getting snacks for the younger siblings, or maybe, you know, encouraging them to do, like we said, chores, but maybe there's things other else going on. Maybe that sibling um, can is old enough to watch the an, a younger sibling why the mom is on a, a Zoom or a phone call for work if, or whatever. You know, there's there's a lot of little things like that. And and in turn, those kids, I mean, it's a crying shame right now, you guys, how much money it costs to put a kid in a sport. Oh, it's unbelievable. Like between baseball and football and cheerleading and ballet and soccer and all that kind of stuff. And not that you want to put it that, you're not going to get to do it because you didn't do chores. But if you say, you got to help me out here so I can do what I need to do because mom or dad needs to get their work done because in order for us to help pay for your stuff, if you could help us here with this. And and this is gets them into understanding the concept so they don't just think, oh, well, mom can just go sign me up and dad sign me up for this and sign me up for that. There, there is a lot of stuff that goes on. Don't you think, Laura? I mean, it's horrible. Oh, yeah. There's definitely a lot of things that go on. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, it, it's crazy. I mean, you're talking four or $500 for some of these sports. And it's really sad because a lot of parents can't afford it. I don't know why they have it so high. But, you know, they do have to understand the value of money because that's that's a great thing to learn is the value of money. Because so many kids, they go off to college or they go on their own and they're just just going through water like crazy. Like money, I'm sorry, going through money like water. That's what I meant to say. You just nailed something. I just want to add to that. Okay, so it's stressful enough for a young adult, I'm a young adult, to go away to college, okay? Lori and I did not go away to college, but we had a lot of friends that went away to college. Mm -hmm. It was a little different back then. Now it's a, it's harder, too. There's a lot of expectations. There's a lot mm -hmm. of, oh, kids want to have the best of everything when they go away to college and right. they have everything. But- they go away to college and they're, they're young, but they're like, they can't even, if they can't do these basic things that we've instilled in them, they're going to be more stressed out and have a harder time. So at least if we get them to be responsible within the household, it'll help, especially like you just mentioned too, with the money. So it's like the money and the, the, um, the laundry and all those things. So I think that's a good thing to focus on Laura. you know, but, um, Christian, I want your opinion on this. Sure. Would it be good to get a card, like a debit kind of a card for a kid when they're like 13 and put it's, their chore money on there so they can learn responsibility for their cards? You want to hear something interesting? I've been getting emails. I, I, I beg with Chase. I've been getting emails about like, you know, and not for me because I don't have a kid, but my daughter does, you know, um, about kid debit cards. And this is, this is something that I think that they're trying to teach and they're trying to, do you remember, did you go, so you wouldn't have went with me because I was in Herrick, I think we went away to camp, it was in Wisconsin and they had us, we, we were in cabins and everything and they had a gift shop and we were allowed to have X amount of money and the money, I want to say maybe $20, which was a lot of money back then. Okay. Oh yeah. They gave it to the gift shop people and they gave us checks. Now they don't do this anymore, but they had gave us checks. They were, they were pretty plain. And in order to get something from the gift shop, we had to write out the check, which is really? because I saw a post the other day that someone I know very, very, um, for many, many years, and she's a grandma right now. And two said something about like, Hey, why in school are we not having our children be taught how to 
balance their money, how to, you know, uh, balance your budget, how to this, you know, the, the list was like enormous. And so it comes from the household too, because, you know, if we do think ahead and, and teach them some of it, it's just going to get easier because repetitive repetitive teaching, you know, you could tell somebody how many times you could tell somebody and then all of a sudden it clicks to them. So then they're going to go, Oh yeah, I remember. Cause I go in my head. Oh yeah. I do remember when I had to start writing checks, when I was in that camp, how they yeah. had checks and it was, it was cute, you know, yeah, so, no, I think that's it was great. Sixth, it, seventh, eighth grade at Herrick. I want to say, I, I, yeah, that's, that's great. I think that's wonderful. Yeah. And I do think that you know, it would be great because then they learn when they're, when they have no more money on their car, they can't do anything. Right. Right. You know? and, and, and they need to be able to, you know, download, be able to download a list of what they bought maybe online for them so they could see where they spent their money. Right. You know, I, I totally agree about that with school. I think that is so important. There's just too many things that I think that they should be teaching in school that they don't, you know, it just, it's crazy because that is really, really important because it doesn't matter how much money you make in life. You still have to budget your money for what you have to spend it for to live on. Right. So, you know, so chores, I mean, well, we could wrap this up, Deb, you want to wrap it up for us? And sure, sure. Actually, Laura, um, I think this is really good. I think that we, um, we all learn from each other. Anybody that would like to pop anything on the bottom of our post and yeah. say something that's helped you and you've been able to use and, and do, we love that. We welcome that. We've been growing. We appreciate it. We love it. We are trying to get to a thousand by the end of the year. Now we're, yeah. we're like getting aggressive here, right? But we want to because every single person on this that watches us, if you just invite a friend, which I've been talking to people that have been inviting friends. And honestly, Lori, and I have talked about this. We've met people that from people who invited people. Does that make sense? Like we've met new yeah. friends, right? Yeah. Uh, just on conversations and, and crazy things. And so we're very thankful because this has been great for us as well. So with that, Lori, do you want to close us out? Yeah, I will. You guys have a wonderful day. Enjoy the fall weather. Look at the beautiful trees and have a nice day. And I'm Lori. And I'm Debbie. Have a great day. Take care now, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.